Our final story is about a man who has a brush with death and morphs it into a genius innovation for cyclists everywhere. Innovating isn't new to Jeff Wolf. He works as an innovation advisor for the British government. I used to go and consult with individuals, and I used to advise them about innovation policies. I'd often help them write a business plan. Then one day, an event changes his life. I was cycling along this road, just a two-lane road, you know, traffic going both ways, very busy. Next thing I know, there's two cars racing each other. And the car on the left, which was next to my bike, caught my pedal and raced off and pulled me along with it. And at high speed, I got thrown off my bike. I went flying into a curbstone. So my chin was broken, my shoulder was broken. I had a few broken ribs, but my head was safe. And the doctor said, you know, you would have not survived this. There's no way. The helmet had totally saved my life. Following the accident, Jeff becomes a bike helmet advocate. But I noticed that no one was wearing helmets, like nobody. Our heads are designed to maybe crash at walking speed. We're not really designed to crash at much faster than that. We did this huge survey of thousands of bikers. I think something like 97% of them weren't wearing helmets. Then we asked them why, and something like 92% said, well, they're too bulky to carry around all day. Turns out cyclists favor convenience over safety. If Jeff can find a solution to both, he feels he can create a helmet more people will wear. I had to find a way to make a helmet flat, much more like a laptop than a, than a helmet, so that it could be easily carried. The folding seemed to be the ideal solution. How do you get a helmet that you can bend and fold when it's made of this material? But Jeff will soon find out that creating a folding helmet is easier said than done. I just thought this is never going to work. This is the end. This is Million Dollar Genius. <laughs> Jeff Wolf wants to take the bike helmet and make it more compact. It folds flat, and yet it still has exactly the same head protection properties as the best helmets on the market. To design and make it, Jeff knows he needs expert help. He approaches industrial designer Graham Brett of Therefore, a top UK design company. At the time, there was a lot of media coverage about the dangers of jumping on bicycles, people caught up and, and not wearing helmets in, in some of the instances. So it seemed like a real-life problem to solve. Part of our concept was to see whether we could come up with a web, a structure, a net. It's a 3D jigsaw puzzle. By molding in a particular way polypropylene, uh, you can get a living hinge in it, which means it, it itself folds in and out. Even though they've resolved how the helmet folds, it still isn't thin enough. In order to protect your head on a helmet, you need a certain thickness of styrofoam or EPS. So if you have two pieces of that, and you fold them together, you've got a very thick helmet. So you go from that to that, you suddenly losing the whole advantage of the folding. So I had to come up with a way now, you've got a very thick helmet. The solution comes from an unlikely place, a dog's jaw. So I came up with this idea of having a dog tooth. You've still got the same amount of protection, but it's got little lips in it, like the top of the castle, so that when it folds together, it's very thin. And when it opens up, you still got the same protection that you need. With a functioning shockproof prototype, Jeff calls it the Morpher Folding Bike Helmet. I really like it because it's morphing, it's changing shape. Jeff wants to move into manufacturing immediately. And when he meets with one of China's leading manufacturers, the CEO is blown away by his product. He liked the idea so much that he said, I don't want you to pay for the tooling. I'm going to pay for the tooling and I'll pay you a royalty, and I'll use my network, my sales network, my... I love this product. Jeff is overjoyed until the first Morpher helmet comes off the assembly line. 
they really, really made a big mistake. The size, the size was a nightmare. The factory-made helmet is much bigger than the average human head, unusable and unsafe. I think it was beyond rescue. It was uh, sort of fundamentally flawed. I just thought this is never going to work. This is, no, this is the end. With the manufacturer not willing to invest in retooling, Jeff goes in search of more money to restart the process. It became a very difficult period for me. I was borrowing a bit of money. I was finding grants where I could. So it's at that point that we have a difficult decision to make as the, as the designers. Do we still stick with it? In a last-ditch effort to keep things moving and hang on to his designer, Jeff considers crowdfunding. I thought crowdfunding could be really good because if I do do well, it's going to validate the product. It's going to prove that people actually want the product. And if I don't, well, I have to kiss it goodbye and move on. Jeff launches an Indiegogo campaign in the winter of 2013, asking for $35,000. My life's work was either going to be a success or a total failure. And my fear was I'd press the button and, you know, $100 would dribble in, you know, maybe $500, and, and that would be it. I think I had a month to get the $35,000, and about halfway through the month when I thought, you're such a madman, Jeff. You really should have set the target lower. Then, something happens. It just started going mad, and Indiegogo were featuring it as product of the week, and, you know, every day the funds are just dribbling in, dribbling in, dribbling in. Jeff raises over $227,000, six times what he asked for, and he gets more than that. The crowdfunding thing gave me lots, lots and lots of information. It told me, it told me there's a market, and there's people out there that really want a folding helmet. Empowered by the crowdfunding experience, Jeffrey visits his manufacturer and impresses them with the demand he's generating. I did eventually convince the factory that we had to retool, and they agreed there's nothing they could do, so we started again at scratch. After another lengthy prototype process, the morpher comes off the assembly line just as Jeff and Graham had envisioned. They got a quick release, and that allows the thing to very quickly fold down flat and then into your, into your suitcase. And also, we need them to re-engage very, very simply and quickly. But now, like every other bike helmet, the Morpher has to be certified by the government safety standards. Failure at this key test would be catastrophic for Jeff. The helmets went off, and you wait 30 days, and that's a very difficult 30-day wait. And then we heard, amazingly, we got fantastic reports. We passed European. A few days later, we passed US. And that means now that we're fully certified, we can go out and sell them, and um, we can compete with any other helmet on the market. Here we are four years down the, the road. We, we couldn't have envisaged that it was going to be quite as, as, as complicated and as difficult as it has been. But in the end, Jeff feels it was worth the struggle. The Morpher Folding Bike Helmet has won numerous innovation and safety awards, and the demand is huge. We've got obviously bicycle retailers and bicycle helmet distributors talking enormous volumes. We've got one distributor in Germany talking about taking 100,000 helmets. We've got big, big numbers around the world, so it's very exciting. The best reward for me is when I see my Morpha helmet being worn by a cyclist. It's just this feeling inside me that if I can do something that's for the greater good, well, the world's a little better off. It's a little bit of a better place. That's the reward I want.